So we have seen lifecycle states and methods, um, then what the user expects um, and activity behavior using the log messages, um, and you know, also pinpointed on the source of our first bug, why the device rotation causes destruction and recreation of the activity instance, um, and you know, what uh, um, device configuration change uh, actually means. Next, we'll look at the uh, 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 look at creating alternative layout for portrait orientation and persisting the UI state using um, bundle. That is the first method we'll look at. Um, and later we'll look at another method of doing the same. Okay. All right, so landscape layout. Um, creating that, you go to the project tool window, click on resources, go to layout, right click, select new, and then layout resource file. Um, that will bring you to a window like this. Okay, so on the lower half of the window, um, you will see the um, available qualifiers. And in that there is an orientation uh, selected by do clicking these two greater than arrows, it will come to the chosen uh, list here. And then select landscape in the drop down for screen orientation. Doing that will um, change the directory name to layout hyphen land. Um, this is under uh, the resources and uh, it just has a different name uh, and a specific name. And the system knows to pick the resources from here when the device is in the landscape mode. Okay. Next, set the name of the file to activity underscore wallet that dot XML, same as the current layout file. So uh, why that is important? You'll remember in the set content view, you call from on create, you pass it um, an integer index, r dot layout dot something, and that must match the name of the file. Okay. So if you want to keep the same Java code, which you definitely want to, um, right? You should use the same file name and then internal conversion uh, and picking the appropriate resources will happen behind your back. Um, OS, Android OS will take care of it. Okay. Yeah, so this is what our layout uh, for landscape can look like. Um, I am not going to show the code for this, uh, but I'll show uh, what it, it could look like. Um, and give you a hint in form of this component tree. Now, our existing layout works okay. I mean, it's not uh, um, it's not shrinking any of our uh, widgets. It's not um, you know uh, overriding them or you know putting them uh, under uh, the visible part of the screen or anything like that. Uh, so it's not uh, uh, terribly required to create a different layout but we are trying to understand the concept. And of course, later uh, we'll add a few things uh, on the left half of this, um, you know, which will make it look better in, uh, in this different layout than it would um, in just the, um, uh, just the portrait layout, okay? So um, I'll leave this as an exercise, but please go ahead and do this um, you know, if, if, uh, going before uh, proceeding. So, yeah, create a linear layout to resemble this screenshot. And here is the component tree corresponding to that. And note the root element is horizontal as it shows here. Uh, our root linear layout element is has, uh, has the attribute set to vertical, um, orientation attribute set to vertical in our existing layout. Um, by the way, you can be creative and uh, make it more attractive, uh, you know, make it uh, better looking for sure. But make sure the widgets that you interact with in the code and their IDs. So basically the button underscore die for the you know, dice here and uh, TXC underscore balance, which is the number of coins that we update, uh, they must be the same. So that again, in the Java code, uh, it picks the appropriate resource through um, you know, find view by ID and updates it, uh, and the Java code doesn't really change, right? And again, that is what we want. You don't want to maintain two separate code bases for um, different layouts. That will be 
just crazy and um, you know I, i'm not sure how android would uh, uh, whether android even supports that it wants you to keep uh, one um, activity um, java class and then you can change these different views by the way that's a um, you know a shout back to uh, the mvc principle where you can have different views independent of um, the the controller in that sense right so you can create different views the different layout files without really affecting the code in the controller that is the activity class, okay? All right, yeah. Now again, run the app, rotate the device um, and see what you get. Well, you'll still lose all your coins because we haven't really fixed that bug, but uh, the, you'll see that the device now chooses the landscape layout. So it looks more like this um, than uh, than this text about uh, you know the rule um, for uh, and under that the number of coins and under that the button which is what we had on the portrait layout. So instead of that, you'll see it uh, rendered like this. Okay. All right. Now, um, yeah. So this confirms that um, not only that the activity is you know destroyed, activity instance is destroyed and recreated but the system picks the more appropriate resource if the developer has provided it uh, when a configuration change happens okay all right now we'll look at the first way of fixing the bug uh, that we saw all right so uh, and we do it by using the bundle object so um, there is an inbuilt mechanism of passing a bundle object instance to the new um, new instance of the same activity. So when an activity is destroyed, um, the OS stores the old outgoing state of the activity, which is called the instance state in a bundle object. Um, do these words uh, you know, trigger anything? Um, so you'll remember the parameter of the onCreate method is a bundle object right and it's um, uh, that is the one so the, the instance of that parameter uh, is coming from the previous instance of the activity you know, it's keeping its uh, outgoing state and passing it on to the next one so that's what is happening here now what we have to do is basically make sure the outgoing instance has the appropriate values and then uh, in on create inside on create we extract those out from the bundle and uh, post them appropriately on the UI. Okay, so doing that will fix our problem basically. Um, now the question is, what is bundle? Well, bundle is a collection of key value pairs where the keys are all strings and the values can be some different things like an int, a boolean, a string, and so on. It can also have an array um, of primitives, for example. Okay. Um, so to before uh, before getting that to work, um, we should create two strings as keys for the balance and the die value respectively. So create these two strings at the class level. They are constants, class level constants, uh, because we want to uh, save and restore them um, at different places. So put them right under your increment um, or the tag constant you have already created. Okay. Yeah. The values of these strings could be anything as long as they are unique uh, for that bundle. So they should not clash with any other key. Otherwise, you know, you'll be getting uh, a, a different data if you use the same key. I mean, an unexpected data if you use the same key. Um, and well, since they, you want them to be unique, using the variable name themselves is a good strategy because you know variable names won't clash, of course. Okay, so we have created the keys. Next, uh, how to save the outgoing state? For that, you have another lifecycle method of the formula on something. It's called on save instance state. This method is called. It's a callback. So, uh, you know, this method is called by the OS um, when uh, it's destroying 
the instance state. Okay, so um, it has it has the bundle parameter, um, and we are basically going to put the data, uh, uh, the relevant data on it. Okay, so let's see what we uh, what we have in the code here. Well, first of all, we have this annotation non-null, which comes from Android X dot annotation dot non-null. Um, as you start typing the on save instance state method, it will automatically, it should, Android Studio should uh, automatically import this library. If not, go ahead and type it uh, at the top. Um, what it indicates is the bundle object cannot be null here. Uh, and that way the developer uh, that doesn't uh, have to um, do a null check on, on this variable, okay? So you can straight away call methods on uh, outstate, like outstate.put int without checking for null. Um, okay. Yes, so the first thing inside the method is the call to super dot on save instance state and passing the same variable. Um, so always you should call the um, super class parent method uh, first before doing anything else. Why? Um, this call will take care of all the default things that the parent method is supposed to do. Okay. We'll also put in the log message. Um, so we record what is happening and we'll see that uh, in the log. And then you have the put two put int methods because well, the balance as well as the die value both um, are integers. Okay. Um, and as you can see, uh, these methods take a string, which is the key, and then the actual int, uh, the integer value. Now, uh, there are similar methods like put string, put boolean, et cetera, for other data types. We are not using them here. And at the end, we also log um, what, uh, um, what, we, what we saved here uh, in this log.d uh, method call. So this is again um, a callback method. So put this code outside or just below your on create, uh, for example. Okay. So this should save the value of the balance and the die face value on the bundle. Now the question is, how do you restore it? <clears throat> yeah. So for that we go to our on create method. Um, the existing code is here in the ellipsis. Um, and uh, the button click listener code is also here in the other set of ellipses. And we add this if statement. Uh, we check if the saved instance state, which is the bundle parameter of onCreate, we check whether that is null. Um, and that check is required because, oops, I think, okay, I fixed some typo there, but forgot to remove the slide. Sorry about that. Yeah, so um, yeah. The bundle parameter can be null in onCreate uh, when it's the very first instance of that activity. So, you know, when you fire up the app, there is no previous state, so this bundle is going to be null. So make sure you check for null here, otherwise you'll get a null pointer exception when you start calling things like get int um, on, that, on that bundle, right? So we check for that and then we extract uh, the integer with the key balance into M balance, we extract the integer uh, with the key die value into a local variable. Um, and uh, because, you know, we cannot, I mean, we don't have a set method on the die, right? Otherwise we could have just passed it to the set method. So we'll just use it and um, uh, we'll use a local variable and just show the value on, um, on, on, the, on the die, right? Okay, so next we just set those values for the text balance and the button by. And finally, we log uh, what we restored. Okay, so uh, the get int method uh, has two parameters. The first is a string, which is the key to retrieve the value. Uh, it should be the same as the one we stored uh, the value with. Um, and the second parameter is an int, which is the default value. It should return if the key is not found. So we want, we are setting both the default values to zero. So you know, in case the key is not found, then we'll get a zero, that's all, okay. 
now uh, we are we have done both things we have uh, stored and uh, uh, retrieved uh, these values so let's see um, what happens now so uh, run the modified app um, and check the scenario one for rotation so launch the app on some coins rotate the device what happens you see on pause on stop then the call to the on save instance state and you see that it has saved for example balance of 20 and say the die value was three then immediately it will call on destroy uh, by the way this log message about you know, the saved value is from inside the on save instance state okay. it will immediately then call on destroy uh, the instance is destroyed and then very quickly it's recreated or well a new instance is created and inside that um, it will go and restore the values and we see the confirmation here restored is balance is 20 and die is three okay and then quickly it calls on start and on resume and the activity is uh, again visible and interacting ready to interact with the user so our scenario one rotation is checked let's also check the second scenario for process depth so um, the second uh, scenario here um, i think i switched the numbers the first one was going to home and process death the second one was rotation um, in in the slide but yeah um, let's go and press the home button um, you know if you have disabled um, uh, process death simulation then uh, when you come back you'll see uh, the right result of course but um, make sure you go to the settings developer options go to the app and say and enable don't keep activities and then run this scenario again and then you know you'll still see the same output um, the state ui state is restored even across process death um, as well as the rotation all right so this way we have fixed the problem that uh, both the bugs that we saw uh, by using the bundle so uh, this is a very simple straightforward way of persisting the ui state um, using the bundle that is already part of your on create method um, in the next videos we'll look at another method um, which also saves the ui state and it has its own limitations uh, but its own advantages also right we stop here thank you